The thyroid muscle is the muscle that is primarily responsible for chest voiced sound color. Now, I'm oversimplifying, but you could say that chest voice is a TA dominant phonation. So right now, as I speak to you in my chest voice, this is a very TA dominant phonation, all right? So in review, the CT gives us an increase in pitch. The TA gives us um, an, 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 an increase or really a maintenance. It maintains the dark chest voice sound color, which is what we want to sing high and get the belts going. So let me just show you what it looks like as we bridge the vocal break um, and the TA muscle disengages, okay? And this is something that we've all experienced before. With the animation, it'll be helpful, watch. Me. Try that again. And I'm playing around with you here. This is the point. As I get to my vocal break and the voice breaks or releases, this is the one of the major points that I want you to get from this presentation is that what is releasing, what's happening is the TA muscle engagement is releasing. Watch again. How many times have we all done this before? Me. That's not going to work. Me. Okay. So what you're learning right now is that when you get into your head voice and it doesn't sound chesty, it doesn't sound like a big, fat, thick belt, it's not boomy, or your voice releases or breaks or yodels, what's happening is the thyroid muscle is releasing. Now, that's the natural intuition of the body. That's what the body is designed to do. The thyroid muscle is not designed to remain in this configuration. It's not designed to remain in this position through and above the vocal break. All right? Now, that doesn't mean it can't be trained to remain in this position through and above the vocal break into the head resonance, it certainly can, right? And when it does, we call that really great belting. Hey! Hey! All right, those are all good belts and you could say that that is also a, a very TA dominant phonation. That's why it's a nice sounding note and it's a good belt. So as you see, although the body initially as beginners without training doesn't want to go into this position in your head voice, with training, it will. And so um, what you need to understand that I think is really helpful is the CT muscle and the TA muscle do not, I repeat, they do not work in a kind of tricep bicep relationship. It's not on or off, one or the other. Frankly, I used to think that, and I think a lot of people do, but that's not the way it works. The way it works is when you're belting really well, like this. Okay, when you have good belts, you're actually getting TA contraction, stability, and CT lengthening at the same time. So what I'm trying to say is, if you want to take your chest voice high, if you want to sound chesty high, if you want to sound great with belts, 
you have to do training to make sure that the cricothyroid and the thyroid erythroid muscle are both working together simultaneously through the vocal break and into the head voice. And, and, and in the simplest terms, that's what we're doing. Not everything, but a large part, a very significant part of the training that we all do in the Four Pillars of Singing is training to get the TA muscle, this guy, to not break, but to remain engaged through the passaggio and into the head voice. Now, specifically in regards to the TBS methodology, the resistance training vowel modification formulas in the book and the resistance training onsets, which are dampen and release, Bleed. attack and release, the glottal attacks for sure, the most important resistance training onset, the most important belting onset to train is attack and release. Hey! 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 That was an attack and release onset and it was very much a TA dominant position. So, dap and release, attack and release, contract and release are your three most important resistance training onsets. And those are the onsets that are best to use to, to build TA dominant positions above the vocal break. All right? So when you're training, you're doing your onsets and your sirens and you're doing and what have you, keep this visual in mind. And just like any muscle, just like any athletic endeavor, it, it just takes strength building and coordination, takes a little bit of time, um, but stick with it, especially the damp and release onsets and the attack and release onsets, and you'll get stronger. You'll start belting better. It works great. Be sure to um, refer to the, the integrated training routines that are in the integrated training routines module of the training system and you can actually watch me do an integrated training routine that's designed for building that's designed for building TA strength designed for, for belting and you can just hop on and sing along and just train with me on top of the video until you get a feel for it and you can do it yourself all right so I hope that better explains what the CT muscle is doing and its purpose it just helps us get higher in frequency, regardless if it sounds like a belt or not. It just makes us go up, down, higher in frequency, all right? To make the notes through the bridge and above the bridge sound beefy and belty, you also have to have the TA engaged, all right? Um, I'll uh, talk to you guys and coach you through it in your private lessons and um, keep going. I hope that was helpful for you. Have a good day.